Boom, look at that. All the regulars are in the house. Great to see you all. Monday evening, those listening on the audio experience, huge shout out to you. Thank you so much for being here. Tony's now been on he's been he's joined us on Twitter. He's now joining us on Facebook. He's all over the he's all over this guy. He's just all over the broadcast. Love it. Um how's everybody doing? Everyone's saying hi everyone. Just seen Carly joined. Don't know if Carly's still in Chicago. If you are Carly, great to uh, see you here. Um everybody's in, which is fantastic. Got something really, really powerful and like just important to share and this has been something that's been on my mind you know for like oh weeks weeks and i'm not shared with anybody because i had i haven't i hadn't figured it out tonight mark joseph's here all right mark sharon's here as well tonight i've had a bit of a, a breakthrough just in my own life basically and my own thought patterns um and that was because and i'll tell you steph all right steph's here as well I'll tell you why that happened because um, and I say this all the time, and the reason why you lot are probably here is that it's so important to have other mentors in your life and other people and be part of mastermind groups and other people to bounce ideas off and chat to and people who can get a perspective on your life, like, because they're not you. So, so many of us, including myself, find it very hard to, when you're in your life, it's hard to work on your life, if you know what I mean. Same in your business. If you run a business and you're working in your business, then no one's working on your business. No one's growing it. And I've just felt for like weeks, guys, weeks and weeks and weeks that something in my life has got to give. Something has got to change somewhere in order for me to make room for growth. Because like I've just, I'll, I'll tell you what, right? <laughs> I'll just go through my week with you so you get like where I'm coming from here. Because I... I've been doing so much on a daily basis. I genuinely had no no room to fit anything else in. And as you all know, if you want to start something new or you want to grow doing something you haven't done before, then ultimately you've got to say no to some of the things you might already be doing. So for me, Monday, this is how my day, my week works. Monday, get up, gym, 6 a.m., get home, breakfast, vlog all day, come home, get ready for tonight's broadcast, broadcast to you guys. Um, and then I finish at, what, like five past ten, I go and maybe you know get a uh, a soft drink afterwards or a cup of tea or something like that. In bed, half ten, start again tomorrow morning. 6 a.m., I get up, go to the gym, come home, have my breakfast. I re-upload tonight's broadcast that we're doing live right now. You guys are watching it live. I re-upload it to uh, YouTube. I put it out on AtsOnThis.tv. I write an article to accompany it. I strip the audio from it and I put that out on iTunes. I promote that on social media. Um, and then I begin cataloging the video we've had from the vlog on the Monday on the Tuesday. I don't get to edit any, edit any of it. I just get to offload it off the camera into uh, my computer. That's Tuesday done. Wednesday, right? I maybe, if I'm lucky, start to edit a bit of the vlog. But amongst all this as well, um, I've got to balance my voiceover career and any acting auditions, etc. right? So Wednesday, I might get to edit a bit of the vlog. Then Wednesday night, we do book club, don't we? Kim here. Kim's here. All right, Kim. Um, and then Wednesday night, book club, right? So I do that on Wednesday evening. Prepare for that because I've got to read the book before I obviously do the book club with you guys so I know what I'm talking about. And then I um, finish again, five past ten. Thursday, get up. What do I do? Obviously, gym again. Come home, breakfast. Re-upload Wednesday night's book club to actsonlist.tv. Write an accompanying article. Upload it to YouTube. Um, I uh, rip the audio from it, put it out on iTunes, um, and then I continue editing the vlog. Thursday. Um, what do I do on Thursday? Oh, no, that is Thursday, isn't it? That's doing that from, from Thursday. Thursday night, I do a three and a half hour Bulletproof Actor call for all the actors on the Bulletproof Actor program right now. Finish, so I finish there like half, about half 10, 11 o'clock sometimes. Friday, I'm like, shit, I've got like very little time now to get everything sorted from the week that's built up. And then I spend the whole weekend editing the vlog. Sunday, I run a half marathon. And then I get ready to do it all again on the Monday. So it's pretty full on. Ultimately, I'm like, I just have no time to... Uh, and it's my own fault. It's completely my own fault. Take like full accountability for it, full responsibility for it. I have no time to really focus directly on some of my goals right now. And I had a call just before this tonight, before I've gone live, with Mark Dharma. You have, anyone who's done the Bulletproof Actor program knows Mark Dharma. He's a coach in LA. He's actually from the UK, but I've known him years. He was a guy who got me into personal development about 11, 12 years ago, changed my life, been a part of my life since. And he's really kind of like a, an incremental person in my life. Um, the, um, an instrumental, not incremental, an instrumental person in my life that helps me get perspective. And he just said, I was, I was like, Mark, I know something's got to change. And I just feel something's got to change. I've been doing the same thing over and over again, and I'm getting the same results, obviously. Tonight's Periscope, guys, and Facebook Live broadcast, this is number 255. 
We've done 255 of these over the last couple of years. You know, they're fantastic. Love all you guys to bits. But I'm like, you know what? Maybe we need to start changing this up. You know, maybe this is getting a little bit same old, same old for us. So I went through with Mark all the stuff that I'm doing in my life. And we then went, right, we need to look at something called the monkey trap. And this is what I, I want to explain to you guys tonight. It hit me like a ton of bricks. And I went, holy shit, this is powerful. And this is the story of my life. Now, I've printed out a little article here because I didn't have time to prep anything for you guys. But I've got a little picture I want to show you as well. But this is powerful, right? If you feel in your life right now, you're like, you know what? I'm working and I'm and I'm, I'm putting all this stuff out there. I'm getting nothing back. Um, and you won't be getting nothing back. You know, there might be areas of your life that you can, you know, you feel you should be doing better in. Or, you know, you're like, I've tried this tactic for quite a, quite a while. It's got me so far, but I feel I've, I've kind of hit a plateau. Listen to this, right? Okay. So it says, I'm going to put a picture up on your screen now. Let me know if you can see this. This is interesting, right? Here's two monkeys up on your screen. Apologies to the audio experience, guys, but this is a picture of one monkey um, with his hand in a box that says, in here, free banana, and then another monkey in the background with a big placard up that says, just let go. And I'm going to explain to you what this actually means, right? Reading this article about the monkey trap. And it says, sometimes the only way to receive something better is to give up whatever we are currently holding onto. Many times we possess the means to be rid of undesirable circumstances and their negative consequences, only to find ourselves unwilling to make the right choice of letting go. So there might be things in your life now that you're like, you know what, this is part of my identity, the things that I am doing, you know, the things I am known for. For me, you know, a huge part of my identity is actonthis.tv. It's Bulletproof Actor. It's all my social media presence, my vlog. I've created this persona, you know, of Ross Grant out there in the world. And, you know, I'm very happy to say it's, it is authentically me. But ultimately, I have created this character almost, you know, out there in the world who does all of these things. And therefore, I identify with those things as me. Acts on this TV gives me purpose. So does Bulletproof Factor. So does all the stuff that I do. My vlog, people watching it today and sending me emails and writing comments on it going, oh, you've inspired me to do this podcast, this, that, and the other. It's incredible. It's part of my identity as that guy, okay? And sometimes I'm like, well, you know what? I want to do more than this. And the whole reason I began all of these things was to ultimately have more exposure and more success in my acting career. And what I was saying to Mark is I have felt... Like the things that I initially started off to get me further in my acting career have actually become my full time things. Whereas my acting career is kind of, you know, still still plodding along, still working on some decent stuff. You know, got a drama coming out next month, doing a shed load of voiceover and stuff, you know, working all the time, but not necessarily at the level and the consistency that I want to work at. So let's carry on, right? Sometimes you've got to let go of some of these things, ultimately, is what we're saying, in order to uh, to receive something new. So consider the story of the monkey trap. And this is what the monkey trap is and how it actually works, right? Monkeys are fast and agile creatures, right? And it's nearly impossible to catch a monkey. It really is. But, and you, I just watched a video on this on YouTube. This is legit. Go and look it up after this broadcast. Richard Haler from Miami, good evening. Good afternoon to you, sorry. And you can see this. It's incredible. You can see this, right? Um, the clever hunters in Africa would design monkey traps based on monkeys' behavioural patterns, right? And I'm not sure if they still do this. They might do. I've seen it on, on YouTube. But the hunters would use, either I've seen them using glass jars, coconuts, or even, like, little holes in, like, the side of, like, rocks. Um, and what they would do is they would make the opening slightly bigger than a monkey's hand, okay? And then they would stuff food in it, like bananas, peanuts, I've seen them do it with rice, into these holes, these jars, or these coconuts, right? And then when a monkey sees one of these things, its hand would reach inside and grab the food. And the hand, when it's grabbed, is then turned into a fist. And when it tries to withdraw its fist, it realizes that it's stuck. So it can get its hand in, it can feel the thing it wants, the rice, the fruit, the whatever. It then, you know, grips its hand into a fist and it can't pull its hand out, okay? Um, the opening is simply not large enough to get its, get its fist out. And the only way the monkey can free itself and to free its hand is to let go again of that food. Now, despite possessing the means to escape the trap, they could do that like that. As quick as they put their hand in, they could draw the hand out, okay? This is mental, but the monkey won't let go, 
of the food. And I've seen this even as a human being then walks very slowly over to the monkey. You would think the monkey would then run away, but it doesn't. It gets really irate and it's pulling and pulling and pulling and twisting itself around and it goes upside down. It's trying all, all of its might to pull its fist out of this rock or this, this coconut or whatever. And then all that happens is the um, the human, I've said like the hunter, wraps like a noose around the, the monkey's neck and just drags it off. And like, and this is like, this is legit. So effectively, the monkey knows that it could, you know, it has the, the the ability to get away. It knows that's what it should be doing, and yet it holds on so slightly to this thing. It actually ends up sacrificing its own life to hold on to this thing that it just can't let go of. That isn't serving the monkey anymore. Um, I've put that diagram up for so long. I'm sure you've all seen that. It's crazy, right? So it says here the lessons. And the questions that this brings up, right? Are there possibilities that you are holding on to right now? Some things that you know that you that that when um, you let go of them could improve your circumstances. You know, for me, the thought of God, I had a really hard time with Mark. Then he's like, "Listen, what what would you need to let go of to free up more time?" And I'm like, "Well, I absolutely, you know, love doing these broadcasts, for instance, right? You know, it takes about an hour of preparation." an hour to do, but then the next day, it takes me roughly like, I don't know, two, two and a half hours to upload online, and I do that twice a week. So there's roughly 10 hours a week there that I'm doing on these live broadcasts um, that aren't, I mean, they are indirectly, I mean, I love helping everybody out and like doing these, and it's a big part of my identity, but they're not directly contributing to me becoming a leading actor in a BAFTA award-winning drama and getting the award for the for the leading actor BAFTA are they <laughs> you know what I mean doesn't mean I would ever give them up completely but what we you know what I'm saying is sometimes you're like what are the things that I could let go of that are going to free up more time that I can work on directly to get to where I want to go um when he says you need to get someone to do that for you yeah exactly so there's so there's options to go well, you know what I don't do all the uploading I bring somebody in to do all the aftermath of this kind of thing, and I just had to focus on the, uh, you know, on the broadcast. So, but ask yourself, you know, that's just one example that I had in my life of something I could let go of ultimately to free up more time in the week. Ask yourself, are there things that you are holding on to right now that just for, through sheer stubbornness you don't want to let go of because you're like, it's part of my identity. All right, Mel, good evening on Facebook. It's part of your identity. It's part of, of, of your what gives you purpose, what gives you relevance, what gives you significance potentially, but it's taking up time that you could be putting directly into, you know, your massive life ambitions, the things that you're like, the ultimate, the pinnacle, boom, this is the thing that I really, really want in my life. Um, you know, are you uh, are you robbing yourself of that time? So that was question number one. Question number two, instead of things, um, they can also be memories or feelings as well, right? So these doesn't have to be things that you're physically holding on to that are taking up your time. They can be things in your head, memories, feelings, thoughts, feelings, you know, of uh, uh, patterns ultimately, you know, of emotion in your head. They could also be people that you need to let go of or walk away from, or it could mean you need to forgive them and just let go of the past. All right, Georgina, good evening. Um, what if you realize that the means to be rid of all the undesirable and toxic feelings are already within your grasp? What would have to happen for you to open up your fist and let go? It's understandably tough how you can ultimately make it easier. What are the new possibilities awaiting if you just freaking opened your hands? That's ultimately all you've got to do. And like, this is just the dilemma I, I was faced with today. It must be a sign, says Amy. Um, like Lowry saying virtual assistant. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And I know I need to bring more people into my team. But, you know, the, the thing for me is um, it's still one thing that these broadcasts do is they still have to pin me to a place at a certain time. So I know on a Wednesday and on a Monday and a Wednesday night, it's like, bang, you know what? If I had an evening meeting, I can't have that evening meeting if it's going to mean I don't get home for 9 p.m., um, etc. So I'm reviewing all the things that I'm doing in my life, not just this, loads of stuff, absolutely loads and loads of things. I'm going through my whole week and um, and I'm writing everything down in this beautiful green book that I bought years ago and I've never used. Um, and I'm going, I'm going to go, right, what are the things? I mean, ultimately as well, get clear. I just had a whole goal setting session with Mark as well in terms of not my goals for this year, but like life goals. 
in terms of like the things, the big things, the massive things in your life that you would really, uh, you would really want. Um, I would, as Fanny says, do the weekly videos, you do have to be live, Ross. Well, no, but they do, I mean, that could not, pop, what you've just done there and how I've responded could not possibly happen if they weren't. Um, so uh, I used to do something called Monday um, Monday Motivation. I would just put a, a pre-recorded video out on a Monday. To be honest, though, doing pre-recorded stuff is going to often take longer than live. I'm, I can't edit this, can I? Because it's totally live. Um, and that means that it's quite, it, it's simple, basically. You press record, you know, go live, press stop, job done. Um, Caroline, you've just got it. Said, why don't you combine Mind Hacks and Book Club to the one evening? Well, this is this is what I was saying to Mark. Then what I think I'm going to do. I'm not 100 percent sure, but what I think we might do is, and this is to better serve you as well within the acts on this community. Chris Stone, good evening. What I'm thinking of doing, and let me know what you you think of this because I do this for you. I really want to know your feedback. Is we go right Monday nights, we go live at 9 p.m. exactly as we're doing now. But we alternate. One week we do Motivation and Mind Hacks, one week we do Book Club. So it means we'll be looking at one book twice uh, in a month. Effectively, we look at one book a month still, but we look at it twice. Might give people more impetus to actually go and pick up the book actually as well. Because you might actually go, well, you know what, I'm not getting four sessions on this. But, you know, it's whetted my appetite or whatever. I know I'm going to like it you know, two sessions might be enough on it for you to then go out, get it yourself and actually put some hustle into reading it yourself. Um, that would free up Wednesdays for me to do one of two things, right? What I want to do, the thing that grows acts on this as a business and gives you guys way more value than probably a book club on a Wednesday night is the premium broadcast where I bring an industry guest on and we do a live Q&A or I go out and I record a podcast or I go out and very soon when on the 7th in Media City opens again, I can go out and do a video interview. There's no evening I have spare to go and do that right now. So I have to try and cram it in in the daytime. I get really overwhelmed. It feels stressful. Um, what we could do is that would mean every other week. So basically every week on a Monday we do Motivation and Mind Hacks or Book Club. And then every other week on a Wednesday we do a live broadcast or I publish a podcast or a video interview because I effectively have the whole of the Wednesday and the Thursday on those two weeks to get that done. And it means you guys get to hear from, you know, more industry professionals. That's going to help you directly with your career as opposed to indirect stuff. Um, and that's going to help me attract more people to act on this. The business grows. I can do more with that. I can attract bigger and bigger guests, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it just means we're going to ultimately, you know, I guess we're going to, you know, we're going to expedite knowledge of the industry and, um, and I guess progress in terms of meeting new people and stuff and networking with people in the industry who can actually give you work, um, then uh, that would, you know, that would, that I think that would, would work for me. People are finally saying a longer session where you combine the two. Only thing is, is combining the two is I don't know. It depends on people's attention. If we combine the two effectively, even if we did 45 minutes on each, it's an hour and a half and it's on two completely different things. What I like to do, I would feel then that by the time we got to the end, if we did motivation and mind hacks first and I gave you a strategy to go away and think about, as in this, what we're talking about tonight, what you can let go of, by the time we then finish the book club, another 45 minutes on that, your mind's not going to be thinking about the thing initially. I'd rather people um, double down on 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 the, you know, the lesson. I would love it if people go away from here and actually look at what they can let go of in their life in order to allow something else in, something that's better. Sharon says, seems so obvious and will help everyone. Good plan. I think that sounds like a good idea, says uh, says Alex. Um, Caroline says, good, good, I think. when it's Because it just gets difficult to get features on ads on this when effectively four days of my week are geared towards two hour-long broadcasts. Um, Whereas I know all you guys, are, you know, most people watching this are actors. You want to get further. In. All of our, this is a wake up for me today. All of our freaking goals, basically why you've probably found me, found acts on this TV is because you were looking for something to help you get further in your acting career. Um, the, the, this stuff that we do is so helpful for all areas of your life, but it's not what Mark was telling me there in terms of going, is it a direct influence on your goal or is it indirect this is indirect because this ultimately we're becoming better people becoming better at life but then we've you know we've still got to go out and then you know do stuff in the industry if we bring a guest on from the industry that's more direct because it's directly related to your goal of getting work 
there's someone else you've met in the industry, someone else you can reach out to, send an email to afterwards, send a tweet to afterwards, make them aware of your work afterwards, as opposed to having to go and do all that on your own. You know, maybe you wouldn't know who it was you would you should even be in touch with or what they're doing. I can bring those people on into the community and ultimately do that part of the work for you. Lowry says, yep, thumbs up. Um, we did do four hours for show real share day, Cheryl. We did a four hour broadcast, but it was all on the one thing. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. We'll allow more time. Uh, says, uh, says, says Chris, um, who was that? Not Christine. Who was that? Dawn. All right, Dawn. I got the, uh, the avatar mixed up there. Um, but yeah, uh, I like the interviews with industry pro says Rich. Yeah, exactly. Look, look what they've done for you, Rich. Basically, you know, we had Daniel Edwards on. I made Daniel Edwards, <laughs> bless him, put him on the spot, <laughs> agree to do it a general audition with Rich because if he came over from Miami and Daniel went, if he comes over from Miami, I'll do it. Rich, Rich came over from Miami, did it. The stuff that's directly related to your acting career, Rich, isn't it? You know, I think this is the stuff that like we double down on and we focus on, and it also helps me grow the community, bring more actors in, and then that gives me more leverage to do more, you know, more stuff. Uh, let's have live call-ins with these industry peeps on video from other actors. There's, I've been looking at stuff like that in terms of actually getting it so that I could bring somebody on to actually ask a question live rather than type it. Because, I mean, ultimately, you get to type any questions you want on these broadcasts that I do with these pros, and then, you know, we answer them, you know, in depth. Um, but there might be a way. I'd have to figure out a technical way. It's not like a, a turn-switch solution at the moment where you just go, oh, this software does that for me. Um, but there may be a way that... Um, you know, uh, we can make that happen where you could literally dial in. It would only be voice, um, you know, but maybe, you know, literally get on the phone and I could give you a number to, you know, to dial you into that broadcast. So you can actually ask your question. Be old school style, like we used to dial in, like going live on a Saturday morning, <laughs> kids TV, where you're like, right, got a caller. Uh, we could probably do that. I'll, I'll figure, I'm, I'm sure we could figure a uh, figure a way out. Rich says we mugged him. We did, you know what? Danny Edwards rang me up today. I had, had a great chat with him. It's very much on this as well. I asked him for clarity. I said, look, you know, I just feel, I've just felt for a while that something's got to change. I don't know what it is. We've been doing the same things for a long time. And gets you into a habit and a pattern. And I think we've taken it to a point where it's like, right, something to get further and to get higher. You know, we've got to, we've got to change something up. Um, I don't want everyone to think about that. Just think of that monkey trap. If you have your hand in that, let me put the picture up again. You know, if you have your hand in that crate right now and you're walking around with it, or if it's, you know, it's just, it's dragging you down, it's holding you down, dragging you backwards, um, then. It's time, yeah, you know, it's time to 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 let go of that to make room for something else. So Gary says, where, how, and how does Master Monocle? That's a clothing line that I've just launched recently. I'm in the middle of launching. How does that fit into your overall goals? Well, that Gary was um, again, you know, I've not been able to really focus much time on that bar the odd day here and there because of all this other stuff we're doing. Now, Master Monocle, you know, clothing fashion was never um, on my list of things to do. Going, I'm super passionate about that. Um, it was something that I think is interesting and it's Sean's domain, my business partner. He's like well up in that world. My role in that company ultimately is pretty limited, Gary. I'm going to create the website for Master Monocle in terms of the e-commerce site. That's what I do best, what I specialize in. Once that's done, the platform we're using to, to host it is Shopify. If anyone wants to set up an online shop, use Shopify. It's hosted. You don't need to worry about any of the maintenance for it. Once that's created, pretty much it takes care of itself. All I would need to do is show Sean literally how you go in the back end and enter new stock that we get in. So you go, right, red T-shirts, we just got an order of 10 in, right, 10. Put that in, and then it takes care of everything else for you. Um, so I need my input on that to be pretty minimal, mate. I just thought it's cool. Um, bit, I'm fascinated by business. I love business, entrepreneurialism, um, social media marketing, but that's something that I can absolutely outsource. My thing that I've realized like over the last, well, since Christmas really, is really the reason I started Acts on this.tv, the reason I got into this arena of online, you know, having an online presence and, and you know, being a, uh, I guess some to a certain degree, some kind of authority in the industry although I would never try and teach anyone how to act or anything like that. That's certainly not what I do. What I do is I curate information from people in the industry and bring everyone together. I love acting as like a bridge between people, ultimately putting people in touch with the people. I've always loved doing that. But the reason I initially set this up and to do that was to further 
my contacts, my opportunities and my own career initially whilst nurturing and helping the wider community learn from what I was doing. So it's a bit like I'm doing this. Anyone else want to come along for the ride and we'll all learn together. Um, but what I've ended up doing is I've ended up really kind of like, I don't know, taking my own focus off my own career to a certain extent, not fully because I still do a shitload of stuff for myself, but I just feel that something's got to give in order for me to go all in more all in on, on that thing. And ultimately, you know, um, the thing that I really want to do, you know, literally standing up there going, I oh, thank you very much. I'd like to thank John Fisk, Chris Stone, Gary Thomas, Richard Haler, Lori uh, Lewis. I'd like to thank Sharon Spink, Kathy Forby, Alice Hewitt, um, Fanny Compton. Who else we got in here? Uh, who else I miss? Mel Radloff is on here. All these people, Caroline, Mark Joseph, Amy Allen, Tony Rossi, all these people, Carly Houston just, just popped up here. Um, for this BAFTA that I've just won, for this leading role in this in this drama that's just won a BAFTA as well. And all of me, you know, and, and I want my own chat show. <laughs> and I want my uh, I want my own internationally acclaimed comedy series that I've already written. I just think someone needs to needs to produce. You always want to work in business entrepreneurship more than acting, though. No, um, no. What I've said is acting will acting alone will never be enough for me. I still believe that even if I had a, a, a row of BAFTAs up here, I swear to God, and a row of Oscars here, and all this stuff, it's not enough. It's too narrow in terms of like I feel. I feel that would never be. It's just, it's just I just know it isn't because I've done it. It's never, it's never enough for me. When I when I went in all in on acting after drama school and nothing else, bar working a shit job um, in retail, um, it's not enough. I I need something that's bigger than myself. So a kid like like running a community, helping other people, um, you know, um, it's just I just love interacting with other human beings. That's why I would love to have a chat show with the greatest minds in the world. Where we don't do stupid bullshit stuff like they do on Graham Norton and, and Alan Carr. And we bring on these incredible minds. And actually what we do is we just make them dress up like an idiot or something, you know, for a laugh. That's what these chat shows seem to do these days. I want a proper, like, Parkinson chat show where we sit down and we go, listen, you're one of the most incredible minds on the planet. Let's have a chat, a real chat for the next 60 minutes about how that's been kind of like Piers Morgan's life stories without all of the like all Piers seems to focus on is so who have you had sex with I'm like Piers you've just you've just got like this incredible person in front of you who has achieved so much and all you're bothered about is a sex life I don't give a shit about that I want to know actually what's made them successful how they've done it the adversity they've faced their life story not their sex story um so kind of a serious version of Piers Morgan really um so, uh, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's that, I want to do the comedy, I want to do lots of different things, but, um, but on their own would never be enough, but together, you know, I think, I just, I think we can all be multidimensional in, in terms of, and then feeling fulfilled with our achievements. I feel fulfilled regardless, you know, I feel so fulfilled, like just the fact of what we all do and everyone in here should feel fulfilled with what you've already done because everyone in here, I promise you, has done incredible things already with their lives, you know, literally, you know, I just get an email from somebody that says, um, you know, oh, you've inspired me to do this, 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 and this. And I'm like, God, you know what? Like that's worth a, a BAFTA in a way, you know, I don't need to be on a big stage. Everyone going, Oh, you're amazing. It's all fake and bullshit anyway. Um, so much of it is, but there is, you know, that the, so you can be fulfilled is what I'm saying without those accomplishments, but those accomplishments, you know, ultimately are the things that make us feel that we're progressing. And it's like, you know what, all that hard work paid off for something, uh, which would be cool. It's fascinating, but I just wanted to share, yeah, the monkey, the monkey trap, basically. Um, anyone got anything in their life? Now? Has anyone been, who is it who's saying they're facing this? Is, is any, is like most people been facing this kind of thing recently or, you know, um, or have you, maybe you've just realized it now. Um, Kim says acting wouldn't, wouldn't be enough on its own. You need to explore other interests. I think you do. I think you just become one dimensional if you just just do do that. And I think the most successful actors on the planet do other stuff. Look at people like Will Smith and The Rock, you know, Dwayne Johnson stuff like that. You know, massive massive names. They don't just act. They've got so much more going on. Um, there's no way you can carry on at this same rate uh, and progress your own career as you like. I know your fans lose this, Kathy. No, definitely. It's interesting, isn't it? Yes, and I, many monkeys, with all the help you give others, do you ever feel a bit drained? Well, no, because you know what, that, well, do you know what, sometimes, do you know what, part of it is that, you know, 
part of all that actually charges me up. You know, seeing other people have success massively charges me up. You know, I know, like, you know, we spoke about like, like Rachel's Oscar that she won a couple of weeks ago. Um, the world will never kind of know, but like, I know, she knows, you know, there was like a lot of energy that I still put into that project without being directly like in the project or anything like that. Um, and that's incredibly satisfying when you're like, God, you know what? I knew, I freaking knew we could do that or you could do that. Um, and and I don't need any kind of like, you know, acknowledgement and like, you know, world attention or anything like that. The, the seeing other people just do well. I say this all the time. You can never beat, you can't beat the person who wants you to win. So if people are feeling insecure about other people's accomplishments, then that's just actually because you you don't want other people to win. When you actually really want people to win and you genuinely do, you're invincible. No one can beat you if you want them to win. Um, I wish more people would get that because it stops you ever feeling insecure about stuff. Because it's like, I wanted you to do that. I really wanted you to release that number one single or write that you know best-selling book or this, that, and the other. You know, Fair play, it shows it's possible. And I get inspired by that. Um, so that when, when you're doing something that's bigger than yourself, there's that mantra, isn't there? You know, you'll get everything you want out of your life by helping other people get what they want out of theirs. And I truly believe that. Of course, there's shits in the world who you help out and they promise you stuff and they give you nothing back. But that's more of a reflection of them. They can only love you to the capacity they're able to love themselves. So if you do someone a favor and you really help them out and you know they never repay that favor or they don't thank you or et cetera, or whatever you feel you deserve for that, then it's cool because they're not doing that for themselves, you know. I wouldn't want to be in that position. So, you know, I never get hung up on, on, on that sort of stuff. Um, but there does come, a, does come a part where you're like, you know what, I've got so much knowledge from helping other people achieve these things. Actually, you know what, I'm going to implement that in my own life to achieve something similar or one of my goals, you know, because it, just because it's possible ultimately. But it's not possible when you're maxed out on your time. And I've gone over the last three or four years from trying something new to continuing that thing, to adding something new, to continuing something new, and then adding something new to that until the point where I've gone, right, I actually um, I actually have no more time. And time's your greatest commodity. It really is. Money's not your greatest commodity. Your time is your greatest commodity and how you spend that. So for me, it's just about reviewing how I'm spending my time and how I can serve not just my, you all you guys better, how I can serve myself better, and everyone who's part of my life. And like I'm so grateful for everyone on here watching, listening, watching the replay for being in my life. And I genuinely mean that. It blows my mind that you guys, literally, I just press live on a Monday night or a Wednesday night, soon probably just to be Monday nights. Um, and within minutes, you know, we've got like, you know, I don't know, 50, 60 people across Facebook and, uh, and Twitter, you know, tuned in, you know, and then people who dip in and out, you know, by the time I finish this, they'll probably be on Twitter. A couple of hundred people have dipped in and out for a few minutes. Same on Facebook. It's amazing. It's incredible to think that people care enough about what I've got to say to go, I'm going to give up some of my time in an evening when it's late as well. You know, you probably all want to go to bed. It's brilliant. Um, Lowry says work smart and not harder. I think it's a mix of both, Lowry. I think you've got to work. You've got to work smart and you've got to work hard. You can't do one or the other. Um, that mantra has been around for, for a while and I think it, people seem to think, oh, I can just get an app for that. Um, you can't get an app for everything. You've still got to work smart and hard. But yeah, the smarter you can work, it means you can work harder, you know, on all of it. Um, what's going on? I've got some long comments here. Totally feel the overwhelmed feeling, says Amy. Love working with others and helping building their confidence as a facilitator, but also need to keep some for me. Got the option today to take some hours down, but scared of having less money. Maybe need to just jump so I can create more time to go for my online business idea and voice over and acting. Yeah, I had that dilemma when I left full-time employment in a shit shop, Amy. Um, I thought, oh God, like I've just lost 40 hours work a week. What am I going to do? I just had to make, I didn't focus on what I'd lost actually, Amy, to be honest, because I'd lost very little financially. I'd lost about a grand a month, which is all I was on. And that is a lot. You know what? That's enough to live on. It's totally enough to live on. What I focused on was the fact that I'd actually gained 40 hours a week, you know, or 160 hours a month. And if I could make that 160 hours a month work harder for me than, you know, than I was making it work when I was in that shop, I could make more than a thousand pounds and, you know, 
and that's what I could. I went all in on voiceover. I can earn a thousand pounds in one voiceover in an hour, you know. Um, I wish it was every day, <laughs> but it's not. Um, but yeah, you know, at some point, at some point, this is the thing, Amy. Right, you've got something's got to give. This, this, you, that might be your monkey trap. You've got to let go of that in order to receive something better, and that goes across the board for everything. That can be jobs, can be relationships, can be people in your life. Like we said, memories that are just fucking you up. You know, that are just hot. You're playing that video over and over and over again in your head, and you know every time you play it, it makes you feel like shit. But you keep going back and playing it again. And I promise you, if I was giving you a piece of cake, Amy, right, or anyone on here who's doing that in their head, if I was giving you a piece of cake and every time you ate it, you vomited, you're like, oh, God, it makes me feel so sick and it makes me sick, literally sick. The next time I gave you that piece of cake, you wouldn't go, oh, give me that again. Mm-mm. Because you knew you're going to be sick. Yet with our thoughts, we do it. We go and eat and devour those thoughts again and again and again. Every single time, even though we know we're going to feel like sick and throw up in our heads. So you've got to, there comes a point where you've got to let go of that monkey track. You've got to just, un, you know, your fist is clenched, holding tightly onto something. You've got to let it go in order to escape. Otherwise, that hunter's coming around, is getting that noose around your neck and you're gone. Um, Mel says, if Amy, if you're still making enough money to live off, just do it. I think it's, I think it's genuinely good advice. Um, I think I will just about, she says, bit of a squeeze, but I reckon you're right. Just freeze up that extra time. You can make extra money so it's not a squeeze, Amy. Um, you know, definitely. Um, Alex says, Amy, I was there all the same. I've been working two jobs as well as my acting career. And then I realized at one point that I didn't need that third job. And like Ross is saying, your time is more important. And then it allows you to focus on the important things. And I've also realized that I'm actually doing fine financially without that job. That's just probably just a limiting belief around, around the job and, and the money there, Alex. Uh, when you take that leap, you realise it's actually helped you more. It really does. Please don't ruin cake for us, says uh, says Mel. No, I love cake. If you watch my vlog, you'll know my favourite cake is Victoria sponge with cream. Very nice, calorie free on a Friday. Um, but yeah, for, it just it just hit me really hard that did tonight, guys. And so when I'm speaking to Mark, and this is why people are saying like, well, where do I get my well filled up? Um, trust me, if I didn't have all the great people in my life who I can talk to, bounce ideas off, and ultimately, you know, get get my fix of like self awareness and you know positivity from, I'd have nothing to give you guys. So I, I'm very conscious of the people I have in my life, and some some of these people I know in real life, people like Mark, and I'll get on Facetime to him. He's in LA. Um, we get face answer him. Other people are like virtual mentors. These are people I don't know, but these are part of courses that I take online. You know, I'm a big believer in investing in your education. I believe if you don't invest in your education, you're cheap in your investigation. Investigation? Cheap in your education. Um, you're cheap in life. You're just cheap in life. Um, you know, so you've got to invest in yourself. Um, and I do that a lot. Um, and I just seek out inspiring people. Um, and that's what fills me up. And sometimes, you know what? Sometimes it is freaking hard. It's really difficult, particularly when you don't have time. I, at the moment, with my schedule, haven't had time to really even... I've not been clear on what I want since I set all my goals at Christmas, got super clear, still very clear towards the end of January. February and March, I've just been like a blur. And I'm like... And I opened Evernote up yesterday to, to, to get back on track with all my all my points um, and I'd gone, God, I'd not, I'd not filled in like my actionable points, the next steps I needed to take to achieve my goals in like three weeks. I should be doing that on like a bi-daily basis, you know, like every, every other day. Um, so sometimes you've got to just stop and go, wait a minute, I am maxed out to the point where I'm actually really neglecting some really important things. This has been the first time I've experienced this really since since running these businesses that I've done. I've never really felt this overwhelmed. And that was when after I did my half marathon yesterday and I stopped and actually pulled my phone out and did a piece of the camera I'm going to put in my vlog this week to go, God, I've just had this like revelation of going, you know what, something's got to change. Something's got, you've got to give some stuff up. And you know what, it's fine. It's all right to change. People are so afraid of change. But actually, like... It's not. It's, it's evolving. That's what it is. You're evolving. The, what you have done so far in your life, and where you're at right now in your life, you once wanted, and that's brilliant because it means you've got it, and you're there. But it's no longer maybe serving you, and then you've got to. All you're doing ultimately is taking one jacket off and then going right. I'm going to replace it with another one, and you're kind of evolving and you're changing your self-image, your identity. Uh, maybe you know the identity you created for yourself has has served you well and brought you to this point but now it's time for a different identity you know if you always believe you're only ever going to be here and this is your identity 
you're probably only ever going to be here. Whereas now it's time to take off that jacket that got you here, put on a new one that's gonna, you know, it's gonna bring you up here. And it's not changing who you are at the core. It's not going, oh, I have to be a different person. It's not that at all. It's just evolving into the next level of you, you know, the next version of you. I think it's fascinating. Like a, it's brilliant, Wendy. Like a snake has to shed its skin in order to grow. Boom, there you go. Can't imagine you not being in my life now, Ross. There's Dawn. I'm not going anywhere, Dawn. I'm not, I'm not planning on dying. Don't worry about that. Um, and this community is going to grow and grow and grow. God, I'm not, you know, I'm never going to turn my back on this. Um, all, all I'm doing is I'm just evolving it um, and growing it ultimately. Like, like when he said there, you know, for a snake to grow, it's got to shed its skin. All we're doing now as a group and a collective, and I'd love your input on this, um, is shedding our skin and putting on a brand new shiny one. Going, right, moving forward, this is what we're going to do. And I think I think for me, the way forward is we, we cut these broadcasts down to Monday, alternate the Mind Hacks and the Book Club, and then it frees up every other Wednesday twice a month we do an industry thing where i actually bring a guest on who's really going to serve you industry-wise so you're getting the personal development stuff twice a month and then industry stuff twice a month um i think that would be um you know pretty sweet really but that's what I'm, that's that's what i'm looking at that's where i'm at in my head let me know your thoughts if you've got this far in the audio experience tweet me let me know your thoughts at ross a grant at acts on this tv as usual um anyone seen i've had a lot of views on my vlog today um it's really good. So, so my vlog today is is it came out this morning. Quite a lot of online business stuff on there, but really kind of like just again getting clarity. We didn't have clarity on that. Talking about how you get yourself out of a slump. And I also called Rachel oh just two hours after she won the Oscar. She was up at like four o'clock in the morning in LA um and spoke to her about what it's like ultimately to well achieve the highest accolade that we just bloody have in this industry. Here's a 60 second clip, check it out. What's just happened like a few hours ago, right? <laughs> I just won. <laughs> just won an Oscar. Welcome everybody to episode 21 of Watch Ross, the one where we spend most of our time biz devin on this. It's amazing, how do you feel? Uh, I mean, it's just totally surreal to be honest. Like, it's not really sunk in. Part the slim fit, I'll show you the slim fit. Basically, there you know, it's tight where you need it to be. <laughs> we'll definitely get you on an episode of Watch Ross in the future where I actually want to hold the Oscar statue. Yeah? Yeah, oh, you'll be very, it's very heavy. Check this out for a masterclass traveller. <sighs> Master Monocle time travel. <laughs> Blows my mind, but just shows you guys, literally, as I said on the last vlog, if you really want it, you will find a way. If you don't, you will find an excuse. Rach, it's been amazing yes. talking to you. Boom, that's just 60 seconds of it. It's a 25-minute episode. If you want to go over to youtube.com forward slash watch Ross to, uh, to check it out. And then if you subscribe and leave a comment on an episode, you can leave a comment on every episode that's there. Um, I'm going to draw a winner at random. Um, in April and I'm either basically going to pay for your spotlight subscription for this year or give you £150 cold hard cash if you've already paid for your spotlight subscription this year uh, most people are just going to go for the 150 quid. I know they are because I think spotlight's about 144 quid, so they're just going to go yeah give me the cash that's fine though but yeah you've got to be a subscriber go to youtube.com forward slash watch Ross you must have hit subscribe on the YouTube channel and then every comment you leave on a video um one comment up to a maximum of one comment per video if you can't just go on and just leave a load of yays on one video um you've got to uh leave a comment per video um, every one of those is a, a, a an entry into the prize draw i'm just going to pull someone out at random in april and going to literally ask you for your paypal address and send you 150 quid cash um, so you can't argue for that youtube.com forward slash watch ross do check that out um has it been useful what do you think? I think, you know, it really just helped me get clarity today. Has that been useful for people? Have you, um, is it giving you something to think about? Something to go, actually, you know what, maybe there's something in my life that I'm holding on to. I'm currently in the monkey trap and I just need to let it go. Lowry's not seen the vlog yet. Lowry, you've got to check it out. It's a good one, um, definitely. What's the intro? What's the song in the intro? Um, it's just some um, some hip hop music that I bought. Um, I buy a lot of royalty free music to use in video editing, Alex. Um, so it's not actually like a song or anything like that. It's just some. It costs about twenty dollars a track. So it's about fifteen, sixteen pounds a track. Because the vlog's pretty pretty bloody expensive, you know, guys, to do a vlog like that to that level. I've got to pay a cameraman. Um, I've got to buy 
I mean, all that equipment was very expensive for the camera and stuff. Then you've got to pay the guys to actually shoot it, my mate Petch. Then I've got to uh, buy the music. Each episode of the vlog probably costs me. I dread to think. I dread it's it's probably two hundred quid, two hundred quid a week basically to just do a twenty five minute episode of the vlog. Um, so yeah, again, that's something I need to review and go. You know what? Is this going? You know where I want it to go. I mean, I love it. I absolutely love doing it. Um, and for me, like I say, one of my things is really want to get into you know doing a lot more presenting professionally on TV. It's an incredible you know training ground doing a vlog presenting to camera every day you know of uh, well you know not every day but every um every week you know a couple of days all that coffee must co do you know what coffee's costa without the pun costa coffee a freaking fortune um yeah that's another thing when i get my apartment later this like couple of months away when i've when I actually exchanged contracts on it the solicitors are dragging their heels um we're gonna stop eating out and drinking out because obviously i have to pay pay for all that as well you know got to pay for Petchy's stuff as well. I can't expect him to spend all his money that I'm paying him to film on his own food. So uh, it is really expensive. Doing a vlog and social media is probably about 12 grand a year in terms of when you actually bring somebody else on board inside your business to do stuff. Um, and that's quite scary when you're like, there's no no absolute ROI on this. I can't say, right, that's now going to make me X amount of money. The reason I do the vlog and stuff is to go, you know what, at some point... Um, you know, the the audience you amass and the attention you get, you can then use as leverage and people will bring you opportunities based on the fact they have seen you doing something. So you suddenly get offered speaking engagements and you go, right, okay, well, I'll come and do that speech for you. But, you know, there's like, you know, I'll come and do that keynote, but that's two and a half grand or whatever. And then you go, okay, well, there's a couple of months of the vlog paid for, um, you know, or I will, uh, depending on how big your social media following gets, you know, I will put that post out for you advertising your thing. There's 500 quid for that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's fascinating how that all works online and social media and stuff and social media influencing and marketing. And I've definitely not have a following as big, big enough to start doing that yet. But that's the reason behind the vlog. Ultimately, it's like it's creative. It's creative. I love doing it. It's a training ground for presenting. Um, invest in a lovely coffee machine, says Wendy. Wendy. Oh, one second. Don't go anywhere, guys. Wait a minute. Coming back. <laughs> Wendy, look what I got. Who did I get this off? Debenhams, was it? Got through the post. You can't see it. This is the, this is the best um, Nespresso machine they do on the market. Got that. Got that ready <laughs> for when I move into the apartment. Um, not opened it yet. Just basically uh, bought it. Sat in my uh, office here. But yeah, that's definitely happening. Because then we'll go in. Uh, we're definitely bringing the price of coffee down. Uh, Brock's here. All right, Brock or Berry. Oh, Brock, I can't remember your first name, man. You told us on the live broadcast um, when we did show real surgery. Apologies. Um, can't remember remember your actual name, but it's uh, but keep Brock or Berry. It's a great name anyway. Uh, Ross, I'm moving in. <laughs> That's a smell. Open it. Everyone's saying open it. It's, it's called a, a Latissima Pro. Um, it's this one. Look, here. Hang on. Oh, I'm sorry. All, all you on the... Um, all you on the audio experience can't see it. It's that bad boy. Nought to latte in 45 seconds. It's got the milk frother thing there. Boom. It's it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, I can't. I've got to have. The, you've got to have the coffee, haven't you? God, I'm nothing. I'm nothing without that. Uh, so yeah, I have got that. We could have the meet up at my house. He says, Alex. Well, you know what? Yeah, we'll have a little uh, house party. You know what? We should. We should. We should. You know what we should do? Those who watch my vlog knows I go in Lily's all the time. It's a little co independent coffee shop in Ermston where I live. And um, for, the, for your information, uh, Brockleberry says, the milk frother don't overfill it. <laughs> your kitchen will sink for, stink for a week. Yeah, I go in Lily's all the time. Um, we should maybe like hire Lily's out and do like a uh, do an evening. Do some sort of like little evening in Lily's. If anyone, you know, you'd have to come to Manchester, I guess. So people who are like down south and stuff. But yeah, that might be interesting. I'll have a little... little soiree um because right near my uh my apartment as well Parte says wendy wendy can bake some cookies because she's amazing at that um yeah awesome peter krellin's here on facebook all right pete just finishing up man he's just got here but you can watch the replay that's uh that's no problem so i'll leave you with that just what you think about that yeah have a think about what you can let go of in your life in order to make room for better things it's not letting go of, letting go of stuff is sad in it it feels like a loss you know, but it's actually not, it's not, it's not au revoir, it's bon voyage, isn't it? It's good, you know, it's not, it's not like goodbye, it's like farewell, have a great journey kind of thing. 
Um, so have a think about what you can just say. Thanks for that. You've served me really well to this point. You were once what I wanted. I'm so incredibly grateful to have achieved you. But right now, for me to now move on to the next level, I'm going to have to just, you know, wish you well um, and and jog on, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Thanks for the intro to Chris Stone, writing something to film this soon. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well done. Yeah, Chris is a good guy. I'm going to see him for uh, sushi on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to put some some plans together to film some stuff ourselves as well, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, thanks for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Do check it out. I'm going to put up on the screen one last time those uh, little monkeys there. Let go. Just freaking let go of some of the bullshit that's holding you back because there will be some. Uh, and then there'll be some stuff that isn't bullshit. There'll be some nice things like we've had with this, you know, these broadcasts where are like, you know what, probably going to have to um, cut those back um, in order to just to serve you better. We can't get any further than we're at now without changing something up doing the same thing over and over again expecting a different result is insanity isn't it We've got to start changing it up uh, so with that i'll keep you posted um why don't we just commit to this and just see how it goes let's go right you know what book club is going to be next monday the monday after is going to be another motivation of mind hacks and then what i'll do is this wednesday i'm going to work on getting a guest um an industry guest to come on next wednesday and that might be somebody like Peter Hunt from Hollyoaks, um, the, the the head of casting from Hollyoaks, to do a live broadcast where you can do a QA and a with him. Um, or it could be Victor Jenkins, really top casting director as well. He cast Broadchurch and um, stuff like that. I spoke to him recently. Um, we could do that. But let's let's start doing that. We've got to up our game, haven't we? We've got to do I'm excited about that. Let's let's do that. Let's just start upping it. Lowry says he's due an upgrade. Set yourself free, Lowry. Get a freaking upgrade. Um, and let's uh, let's just let's move on. We've been doing like 255 of these. We've been doing in the same way. Let's start changing some stuff. Do them a bit differently, um, and uh, and yeah, and start moving. You know, move, moving on up. Get the M people song on. Moving on up. Um, trying to break free. That's it. It's even in the words. Nothing can stop me. Moving on. Up. I can't end this broadcast, guys, on Facebook because it's not appearing as even there so you have to just bear with me for a minute whilst i reload facebook um i can't see any comments on facebook if anyone's got any questions on uh, on twitter while that's doing its little reload thing shout up oh it's done it it's done it already it's here um do let me know anyway if you're not part of the acts on this facebook group come and join facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash acts on this tv follow me on twitter as well at acts on this tv same on instagram and please follow me on Instagram myself personally, at Ross A. Grant. Same on Twitter as well, Ross A. Grant. Because I'm putting out a load of exclusive content on Instagram. You don't get anywhere else. We're cutting 60-second clips out of the vlog that don't make it into the final vlog. And I'm just putting them out as extras on Instagram. Um, so you get some free value there, some uh, some pretty good things. Again, just to think about that will uh, make you ask yourself some questions in order to get some answers. Right, I'm going to go. I'll see you guys very soon. Oh, God, it feels bad, doesn't it? It won't be Wednesday. But it'll be next week, but I promise you, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll am gonna, keep in touch in the Facebook group and I'm going to start putting, like, I'll put some extra videos out that are, like, just randomly, you know, at, at various times, keeping you guys posted. Um, onwards and upwards, guys, yeah? Let's smash it. I'll catch up with you very soon, all right? Bye for now.